thank you so much for letting me be here uh, today. Uh, so I'm going to share with you six stuff to think about when you create a growth hacking team. Because for me, I am trying to build a team that has a growth hacking mindset. Um, and I think everyone needs to be on board and understand what that means. Um, so, but the first thing I wanted to share with you, uh, when I got the question to come here to speak today, I started thinking growth hacking, okay, so how do I actually look at it? And I think that's important also to share so you kind of get the context of what that is. So I, yeah, and that's me by the way, I'm Ronia, I'm Head of Marketing and Communications at Falcon Social. Uh, and this is the way, I love this module, super simple, but I think it always works. So for me, growth hacking is really when marketing and tech is kind of intertwined in the sweet swap spot between there. So of course, I tried to get all my marketing guides, like the content marketeers, the, the copywriter, the designer, to really think about tech and development, and my developers to actually think about marketing. So I think this spring, one of my developers actually went on a course, a marketing course, used to read up. Because if they can understand each other, for example, pay on paid advertising, the, the developer can give <laughs> solutions or crawlers or all different kinds of things that the paid advertising guys can then punch into your Facebook advertising, uh, or sorry, the power editor, for example. So I think it's really, really important to have that correlation between there. But then I was also thinking about, okay, how does that actually feel? And I think this is the closest thing I ever got to. Um, this is really the feeling of growth hacking, I think. Um, but I, if I'm really gonna put it into a sentence, I think for me it's a calculated process that can be repeated and measured. So for me it's not a mistake or, oh, I just stumbled upon this and it's great. It's really something that you could put into a process and automate. Um, so before I move into the six uh, things, I wanted to share with you what Falcon Social does. So we are social media management for enterprises. So we do offer a social media management platform where big companies can do all the disciplines that they need to, to do to do social at scale, basically. 640% uh, uh, increased MRR, or monthly current revenue, um, <coughs> did Falcon Social have, have the first year of first full year year of sales and that was last year uh, but we already are ahead of our goal this year and that was to triple the MRR so we're really really growing fast now. Um, around 25% is the total revenue of contributed uh, closed deals that is contributed strictly from marketing my department and just before I went here I actually um, well, it was Q3 finishing off uh, yesterday, right? So we're actually on 34% this, this quarter, which is absolutely great. Um, but the things fixed, the six stuff to think about. Um, the first thing, I think, is really the context. You want to create a concept for your team to work within. Kind of the borders, really. Um, and this is our borders, or the way we think, or the way we put things into context. The first one is big. Our goals are absolutely absurd. If, so, if I showed someone um, on my, uh, let's say, uh, CMO at another company, company our growth goals, they would go, Ron, you're, you're absolutely insane. You're never gonna do that. You're gonna kill for yourself and your team by putting those up. But we know, I know, it's absolutely crazy, but I do uh, really suggest put up absurd goals uh, because then you really have something to fight for. And the other part is things are hairy. We are, shit is complicated, and we are operating in an extremely cluttered space that is not really defined, and we have a lot of competitors. And I think it's important for my team to, and me to think and be humble about that, that yes, we think big, but we also need to be humble in the thought that it is a hero space that we operate in. And audacious, of course, that we always look into the future. Dare to do mistakes, we will forget those and move on. And I think this is really the context in the way I try to make my team work and operate in. The second one is goals. I think that's also extremely, extremely important that everyone understands the goals that you are putting up for your business. My one is called MQLs. It's marketing qualified leads. 
that we would give to the sales funnel. So we the sign up form on our website. That's the most important page on our whole website. And I think it's really important too for that everyone buys in and understands why this is important. Of course, we are a growth company, so of course we want to grow. But also that everyone try to think about how they can ship in to the big picture. How can my designer actually um, start thinking about how can I optimize um, the design to actually get more, more leads in, for example, or more conversions on the website. The third one is data. Um, data is of course important because you will do a lot of tests and, and, uh, and so forth when carrying this out. And I think it's of course very important to look at the right data uh, because we mentioned Excel before. I do I use Google's <laughs> spreadsheets. <Good. laughs> uh, but of course that's like very nitty gritty goals and the small ones we do still keep in, in, in Google's spreadsheets. Uh, but you need, need to make it simple to consume for everyone because not everyone in your team will go in and see, uh, look at your, your Google spreadsheets. Uh, certainly not my copywriter, he would never do that. He, he could, I mean, he, he's, not a, he's not an analyst or a data number cruncher. So what we did was to buy a flat screen and we did pull our most important uh, KPIs for marketing team at Falcon into this. It's just above our heads in the marketing department. So everyone, every day, uh, can feel connected. And we also talk about it on a weekly basis. OK, something is happening here. Why, why is that and so forth? And then we can maybe dig into the Excel sheets, sorry, the Google spreadsheets, and, <laughs> and see why that is. But just because I think it's important to discuss what's, what's happening um, and so forth. So everyone is really involved. Um, the fourth one, it's people, and of course it's important to have people, uh, I, I, don't, I think that's a no-brainer, but for me I think recruiting and also growing this team, because I started when it was no one, so I was basically on my own, so I recruited every one of the 14, the 14 team members that we now have on, it's be extremely skeptical. <laughs> Take your time to hire the right people with the right mindset. And for me, it's always been to, to look for those, those things that maybe is not expected. So for example, my, one of my great um, content produ uh, producers, she's also holding a lot of webinars for our clients. She's, an, she's actually been doing a lot of acting classes. And you can really sense that in the way she articulates things. So her voice is... It's absolutely beautiful, and she gets so much credit for my customers having listened into her on webinars. And I think she wouldn't have that if she really didn't have the other side of things. Uh, my developer, he comes from also a, a little strange, back, not strange background. He he was a developer at um, the porn industry uh, site before, and God. Does he know A-B testing and click through rate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Many other companies would maybe see, oh, that's this weird thing that he actually worked with that before. I said, yes. I was actually so excited about it. So like, tell me all about it. How did you do it? Like, how did you A-B test and so forth? And it's actually paid off really good. So I'm saying, be a bit skeptical and look for other things that rather than only, you know, the, the, what you would expect. And always put them for a brief. I, I never hire anyone just for a nice chat. Um, so the first thing I would have is of course a chat with all the, um, all the uh, candidates. But then the people that I really think, okay, this can really be something. I want to put them to the test. So I do send out a small briefing or a task, depending on the role. So every time I write a job description, I also write a test that will go with it. And sometimes it could be a role play, or sometimes it could be a task. So this is a task for uh, one of my developers. He needed to set up a, uh, a uh, LinkedIn <coughs> uh, connect uh, landing page and to pull the data from the user who actually logs in. Um, and I think this really shows me that how the candidate would execute on the task. That, that they will do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I also ask them how they, 
how the thought process went when they actually did it. So you understand how they think when they carry out something. Mm. The fourth one is listen. I think that's, that's of course, important for us as a um, social media management tool or whatever. But I think it's really, really important to, and of course we use our own tool to do that, but it's really, really important to listen into your brand mention, your competitors, um, and really discover what's out there. Because as soon as you, you do that, you can also do small hacks or small uh, fireworks um, by really being real time and reacting to those. One example could be when uh, Google decided to win down Wildfire, which is a comp competitor of ours. So of course we did listen into that, but we also reacted very, very fast. Uh, and we did have you know, landing pages, blogs, um, paid advertising out within one hour running, uh, targeting their customers. And as we also had the data, we also knew exactly who their customer was. So we actually did, um, I did, for example, a blog post to Macan, one of their agency was a client, where I addressed it. If I, we were your provider, we would never let you down. So here's, here's a pitch for you. So I think listening into what's actually happening around you is extremely important. Did you get Macan? Yes, they are clients right. of ours now, <laughs> yes. Um, the, six, six, well, the, the, the last one is, a, is process, and of course, we, I think we heard it before, you need to figure out what really works for you and repeat it and adjust it. So that could be everything from A-B testing or listening into listening project about your brand or your competitors and then reacting on that by content marketing. You can really, really <coughs> repeat that, but do kill it if it doesn't work. And I think that's really important as well. If it doesn't work, move on. Um, that's what at least I have done. So just a small recap on how I have built my team, or actually don't, not. This is what I learned, building a team. So I wish I knew everything <laughs> before I actually built it. So really set a context for your team uh, that they can operate in. That is, is the, when the goal is clear, uh, and they can move, then they can move around that uh, in a context so they actually get to try out things and, and to be innovative. Um, also look at the data, make it easy to consume. Make processes that are repeatable for your business. You, don't, you can't afford to just make one thing, like one shot at a time and then move on to the next. Make sure that you, you think about the long term. And hire the right people with the right mindset. Thank you so much. <laughs>